Tell Mr. Wilson I'd like to see him. Now, who is here to see Mr. Wilson? Asked a voice from behind them. Ah, oh, so it's you. What, what are you doing here? Still trying to sell properties? Maybe you're trying to sell your own property. Here's a bit on the smaller side. Do you think my boss would like that? You are a fool. Mr. Cole, I agree. Do you want me to call the security? Robert was in no mood to waste any more words on Fraser. He impatiently waved his hand. All of you, stop. Shouted a stern voice from nearby. Mr. Wilson, what are you, what are you doing here? Can, can I help you with anything? Why are you still standing there? Fraser, get lost. You get lost. You are the ones who should get lost. You fools. You bunch of idiots. Do you know who he is? Mr. Wilson, I presume. I hope that you are available to meet me tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning at the sales department of the Filler Group to personally buy from me 100 properties. No problem, Mr. Mackamore. I'll be there on time. Well, now, Mr. Cole, I am an honorable man, but I don't think it's necessary for you to kneel down and lick my shoe. After all, your mouth is too dirty and smelly. He mumbled something incoherent about cooking dinner and hurried out. Why would someone of his power need to go home and cook something? How many times have I told you, knock on the door before you come in? How hard is that to remember? My wife, can you stop reminding me of the rules? He asked, smiling bitterly. He had anticipated the scolding, but it had still hurt. Natalia Laples, the business director of the real estate group, glared at her husband. You know, because I'm your wife, I tried to cut you some slack. You've been working here for three months now, and I tried to get your name out there. How many properties have you sold? Nothing. You haven't brought in even a single customer. What have you been doing? Sit around like you're still at home? With the current housing market situation, even a fool would be better than you. Hearing the volume of his wife's scolding, Fraser immediately closed the door behind him. At the very least, he couldn't let others hear the embarrassing firing he was a victim of. Why do you even bother shutting the door? Even if you shut the door, it's not like everyone doesn't know how much of a joke you are. I was really blind when I married you! Natalia's heart ached as she said these words. She felt wronged. Natalia, it's not that I don't want to work hard. It's that the sales manager always steals my customers. The sales manager hates me. The whole department hates me. From day one, I haven't been able to keep a single customer. Fraser, how many times have I told you? You need to learn to be objective. Take some initiative and responsibility. Very well. I'll try harder, I, I promise. I don't believe that. I'd rather believe pigs can fly. Look, I'll try to help you out again. I've talked to these two clients. You just need to contact them. Fraser felt a burst of embarrassment, but he was also touched. His wife always had a sharp tongue, but a soft heart. After taking the piece of paper, he dejectedly left her office. As soon as he stepped out of the door, he heard <laughs> laughter erupting from the previously quiet sales department. A salesperson, Tarsen Linster, quickly grabbed a cloth Come and on. passed it to Fraser. Hurry up and get back to work. You like housework. Tyson laughed mockingly at Fraser before saying, Go ahead, tidy the office. You know, I don't understand you. Director Labels makes plenty of money. She can support you just fine. Why don't you run on back home and get back to your classic housework and cooking? Why are you trying to steal work from the rest of us? Hmm? You're worthless here. Tyson! Joe Parker, one of the higher up salespeople, pushed the salesperson Ouch. away. Fraser didn't trust Joe any more than he trusted Tarson. Joe always acted as the manager's spy. He had directly taken customers from Fraser on countless occasions. 
Come on, Joe, why don't you push him out instead? All you have to do is hit him. Tarson had a cruel look on his face and even took a step closer. Fraser was used to their provocation, but it didn't mean he liked it. He glared at the two men and headed to his desk. Joe spat out as Fraser walked away. Bah! <laughs> Trash is really giving our department a bad name. Money love you. Go back to work. Come on, guys! I want sales! 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 When the mocking voices faded and everyone started to get back to work, Fraser unfolded the note Natalia had given him. However, just as he was about to call the first number on the list, a large, middle-aged man walked over to stand beside his desk. Fraser peered up into the irritated face of his manager, Peter Earl. Peter glared condescendingly at Fraser before asking, Macamore, who gave you permission to use your personal cell phone on company time? I'm calling a client. Oh, really? Do you really think that you can succeed in making a sale? Why are you so stubborn? Look at them. They can sell a property every few days. Then we have you. You're worthless. If it wasn't for the fact that your wife is the boss, I would have fired you a long time ago. Do you think you could earn the same salary as those guys for doing nothing? Macamore, this is your last chance. If you can sell 100 properties by tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, then you can stay. I'll even give you a promotion. If you don't, then you have to pack your stuff and leave. A murmur went through the sales department as everyone heard the almost impossible task on Fraser's hands. Although the employees knew that Peter was determined to get rid of Fraser, they never expected him to be so ruthless by demanding the young man to sell 100 properties in less than 24 hours. The most that the department had ever sold was a combined effort among the entire staff to sell 89 properties in two weeks. Selling 100 in a day was an unrealistic goal. News of the challenge quickly spread through the entire building. Soon after, Natalia also heard the news and rushed out of her office. Although she knew that Peter was deliberately making things difficult for Fraser, and she didn't like it, she still greeted her sales manager with a forced smile. Mr. Earl, don't you think you're being a little impractical? She asked. Do you think those numbers are actually... Don't say anything. Peter interrupted Natalia coldly. Director Laples, it was because of this idiot that our sales department became the laughing stock of the Philly Group and even the entire San Clemente real estate industry. Therefore, I have a responsibility to my team that can't be avoided. Peter stood up straight and announced. By nine o'clock tomorrow morning, if your useless husband can't sell 100 properties, then he'll be kicked out and you'll be dragged out along with him. Looking at Peter's malicious smile, Fraser had the urge to punch the man in his smug face. But when he saw Natalia's unsteady feet, he rushed forward to support her. Are you all right? He asked softly. Natalia was still in a daze. She had come to the company soon after graduating from college and had worked hard to reach her current position. Now, in the blink of an eye, it could all be lost because of the ultimatum to her husband. Have all these years of hard work just gone down the drain? She wondered. If I lose my job over this, how will we support ourselves? Will I have to rely on my useless husband? This joke was quickly becoming not funny at all. The more Natalia thought about it, the angrier she got. She almost slapped Fraser. Everything is going wrong because of you! Oh, Natalia, what's wrong? You angry again? 